Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to show you a system that can reconstruct any gestures, just use the light around us. No cameras, no on-body devices. This is a joint work with my colleagues and my advisors at Dartmouth College. Human sensing is the next big thing in both academia and industry. By sensing our daily activity, we can monitor and improve our health condition. Human sensing can also engage our daily life. Just by waving the hand, we can freely control the virtual object and interact with others. It is already happening in the industry. And I have seen many of you wearing these wearable devices to monitor your daily activities. But wearable devices are not enough for the human sensing. Because to get the sensing data, you have to remember to wear these devices and charge them frequently. So to solve the problem, we can place many cameras around us and use the cameras to reconstruct our gestures. But camera-based method has a big issues on privacy. And we simply do not want to be in a place where there are many cameras. Also, the raw image data contains billions of pixels. And to deal with the pixels, the existing method rely on hundreds of thousands of gestures to train the model. And they require heavy computation overhead on top of it. Another approach is to use our signals to sense us. And we have seen many interesting work on this topic yesterday. But in some places, like hospital or airplane, we don't want this R signal at all. And given the relative large wavelengths, the existing R phase method can just provide, um, can just classify some predefined human gestures or just track single body parts in the 3D space. So now the question is, can we reconstruct any gestures without using cameras or on-body devices? Well, the short answer is yes. And I'm going to tell you a radically different approach that uses just the light around us to reconstruct our gestures. So first, let's introduce our license test bed. License consists of five of the shell LEDs on the ceiling and 324 low-cost photo dials on the floor. And we show the final reconstruction result in real time on a monitor. No matter what you do on this testbed, license can fully track and reconstruct our gestures in the 3D space in real time. So you may wonder how license work. Well, the idea is fairly simple. We just want to use the shadows around us to infer our gestures. So how can we get these shadows without using camera? Can we just use some low-cost photo dials to capture our shadows? To answer the questions, we did a simple experiment. And here, we placed the $3 photo dials on the table and the LED light right above it. The photo dial it's driven by an Arduino control board to convert the analog signal to the digital signal. We then block the direct path between the LEDs and the photo dials and measure the light intensity change perceived by the, by the photo dial. Here, the x axis shows the distance between the blocking object and the photo dial. And the y axis shows the Arduino readings, which is proportional to the actual light intensity. Here, the, the, bl the blue line shows the ambient light intensity, and the red line shows the LED light intensity without any blockage. Then we find out that when we block the line of sight, the light intensity perceived by the photo dial consistently dropped by 70%. And we have seen this significant impact under various of settings in our paper. So basically, we can use these low-cost photo dials to detect the light blockage impact. And imagine if we have many photo dials on the floor, we can use them to capture our shadow and use the shadow 
to infer our gestures. So far, everything seems great. But to make it work in practice, we have two key challenges. First, it is not easy to capture the shadow in practice because we have multiple light sources. And the light rays coming from different directions will dilute the shadow on the table. And this is a quick demo to show the shadow of a mannequin as we turn on more light. And second, even if we can perfectly separate the composite shadow, it is still challenging to reconstruct a 3D posture from this 2D shadow maps. Also, these shadow maps only have hundreds of pixels, so we cannot directly apply the existing vision-based method to solve the problem. So to deal with the first challenge, we flash each light at a different high frequency. So we can recover the unique shadow caused by each light source. We then combine the 2D shadow maps together, and we build a skeleton model and use the model to, uh, to seek a posture that can best fit all of the observed 2D shadow map in different directions. So there are two key components here, the design of the light beacon and the posture inference algorithm. So first, let's talk about our um, light beacon design. So now we have two LEDs and one photo dial. And each of, the light, uh, each of the LEDs is transmitting the light beacon by flashing at a different high frequency. And these two figures show the light intensity perceived by the photo dial when a single LED is on. And when both of the LEDs are on, the, the photo dial will receive the combined light beacon. And if we project the combined signal to the frequency domain, we can see different peaks. And the highest two peaks represent the two LEDs. And here, the X axis shows the frequency and the Y axis shows the frequency power. More importantly, this frequency power is proportional to the actual light intensity in the time domain. So when we block the direct paths between the LEDs and the photo dial, the corresponding frequency power will drop. So we can use the drop to detect the light blockage effect and separate the composite shadow. For a single 2D shadow map, it can be caused by different 3D postures. But we have five LEDs on the ceiling, and each of them can create a different shadow map on the, on the, on the, on the floor. So the combination of this 2D shadow map can uniquely represent a 3D posture. We then build a 3D skeleton model, and we assume that we know the user's body parameters beforehand. The model has nine key body joints, and we can freely twist or rotate each of them under the biological limitations. We then use the model to search for the optimal posture that can best match the observed 2D shadow maps. So if we think about the LEDs on top of the, uh, right above to the user, we can see that there are several light grids that are blocked by the user, and ones are not blocked by the user. So to find the optimal posture, we need to make sure that all of the blocked rays are close to the body segments on the model, whereas all of the non-blocked rays are far away from the body gestures on the model. And since we have multiple LEDs on the ceiling, we can apply the rules to the rest of the LEDs and formalize the problems as an optimization problem. And the goal is to find an optimal posture that can best match all of the observed 2D shadow maps in different directions. But here, the search area is too big. And we speed up the process in two ways to make a real-time system. So first, we only check the blocked photo dials on the shadow's border, because they are more related to describe the user's body shape. And second, we use a greedy algorithm to prioritize the search order in terms of the user's body size. So at the end, we can get a 3D posture from five um, different 2D shadow maps. 
then by aggregate these 3D postures over time, we can continuously recover the user's 3D gestures. And at the end, we use a common filter to smooth the final result. So let's see some key results use the license test bed. Here we have seven users with various of body size. And we place three cameras on each side of the test bed and we manually label the body segments in the video to get ground truth data. Here we present each um, key body joint as a 3D vector and we compare and we calculate the angular error between the inferred 3D vectors and the ground truth data as our evaluation matrix. This evaluation matrix is widely used in many peer works on the uh, skeleton reconstruction and the human tracking. And here we evaluate 25 human gestures in total, including 18 upper body gestures, five lower body gestures, and two combo gestures. And in the following slides, I'm gonna show you four selected upper body gestures and five lower body gestures. So first, let's take a look at the system reconstruction accuracy for the upper body gestures. And the X axis shows the gestures and the Y axis shows the angular error for the five upper body joints. Here we have three key observations. Now if you first take a look at different joints, you will see that the backbone, the backbone has the minimum error. It is because large body parts will create larger shadow map change as it moves. So it makes it easier to detect the movement and reconstruct the gesture. And similarly, if you look at different gestures, the gesture with large movement magnitude, like the users doing circling, has better performance than that for calling. However, the gesture with high speed movement can lead to a mixture of blocking or non-blocking status. And this mixture will lead to errors in the shadow map. So the gesture with high speed movement will have slightly higher errors. But overall, license can achieve 10 degrees mean angular error for the five upper body joints. Now let's take a look at the system performance for the lower body post, uh, gestures. Since the lower body segments are close to the floor, the corresponding shadow map change are relatively smaller than that for the upper body gestures. So the, the performance for the lower body joints are slightly worse than that for the upper body joints. But overall, license achieved 11 degrees mean angular error for the four lower body joints. Here we also take a look at the processing time for the two key steps in the license, the shadow acquisition and the skeleton reconstruction. And the y axis here shows the time in milliseconds. And we can see that the processing time are consistently lower than 16 milliseconds. And since the two steps run in parallel, the final reconstruction delay by the end user will only depend on the slower step. So license can produce at least 60 posture inferences per second. And if we take a look at the shadow acquisition part, we can see that the data transmission and the signal sampling are the two bottlenecks. And these two factors are limited by the hardware we use. Uh, and we're still exploring better platform to solve the problem. So now let's conclude the talk with a few limitations, uh, with, with some potential applications and future work. License can enable many applications in smart control. Just by waving the hand, we can freely control the object around us, playing game without using any cameras or on body devices. Another potential application is behavior monitoring. Since we can continuously reconstruct the user's, uh, user's gestures, we can identify the user's behavior pattern and try to find a correlation between the user's behavior pattern and their health condition, and possibly identify some early symptoms of some disease, like, uh, the, um, like some uh, mental health disease like depression. 
Here, our work still have some limitations. So first, our current test bed still rely on hundreds of photo dials on the floor to reconstruct the gesture. So you may wonder, how are we going to make it possible, or how are we going to make it practical in the future? Here we claim that the future is bright, because we can use smart fabric to deal with the deployment concern. The high-level idea of the smart fabric is to try to embed all of the tiny electronic components into the textile. And this is a demo video from uh, Google's recent project to show how to manufacture uh, this kind of uh, smart textile. And in our case, the electronic component for the light sensor is really small, just 0.5 uh, millimeters in diameter. So it is feasible for us to embed all these light sensors into the furniture, like sofa, rugs, or carpet, in an unobtrusive manner. Another limitation for the current license is that we perform all of the gestures in an open space without any other object involved. But in practice, many static objects like furniture or moving objects like the moving um, users can also introduce additional shadows to the lessons. So to make the system more practical, we may apply some um, background, background subtraction algorithm to remove this static object or some other learning algorithm to separate user. But the final solution has to be due with the ultra low resolutions of the shadow map. So it is still a challenging problem. And thank you all for listening to my talk. And please visit our website for more details. And I'm glad to answer your questions. Thank you.